Let's talk about some waiver wire pickups for week 11. Kicking off my list is Jazz forward Simone Fontecchio. Fontecchio's path to the NBA is not only improbable, but it's very unique. He played in Europe for about 10 years before ultimately signing a two-year deal with the Jazz in 2022. But while he was in Europe, he built a pretty strong reputation as a sharpshooter from deep. And that's translated pretty well to the NBA. Last year was technically his NBA rookie season, and he didn't get much playing time, averaging around 15 minutes per game. But this year, with Laurie Markkinen, John Collins, and Walker Kessler all missing time, Fontecchio's earned more minutes. He actually started to stretch of 14 games between November and December. And over the last 20 games, he's definitely shown his potential. To begin the year, he was averaging around 21 minutes per game, and over these last 20, he's played closer to 28. And his production has gone up accordingly. He's averaged 12 points, 4 rebounds, 1 assist, and and 1.5 stocks per game. What really jumps out to me, though, are his shooting percentages, specifically from 3. He's making 2.3 three-pointers per game, and he's knocking down 40% of his attempts. And he's also shooting at 46% from the field. So if you do pick him up, you can expect stellar shooting percentages, good three-point production, and also some defensive stats, along with a couple of rebounds. The Jazz seem pretty curious to see what he can be, even though he's a bit older, and given how strong his play has been over the last few games, he may have locked up his spot in the starting lineup. He's only rostered in about 20% of leagues, and if you're looking for a versatile forward, I would definitely give Fontecchio a look. Next on my list is Aaron Neesmith. Aaron Neesmith is quietly inside of the top 90 on the year. He's had a career year in a number of areas, playing a career-high 25.5 minutes per game, scoring around 11.5 points per game, getting 1.2 steals per game, and 0.7 blocks per game. What really stands out to me about him, though, is his three-point production. He's making around 2.2 three-pointers per game, and he's shooting at 48% from deep. That shooting percentage will likely not hold up, but while he's shooting at this well, he's definitely worth a look. He's only rostered in about 32% of leagues, and if you're looking for a swingman forward that can knock down threes and provide good defensive production, I would definitely give him a look. He'll also chip in some rebounds and get you an assist or two. Last on my list is Daron Sharp. Sharp is more of an add in deeper leagues because he plays so few minutes. He only averages around 16 per game, but he's definitely productive when he's on the court. He's averaging a career-high 7.4 points per game and around 7 rebounds per game. He's also averaging a career-high 1.4 stocks per game and shooting at 58% from the field. Up until now, over his first three years, Sharp has pretty much just backed up Nick Claxton. And he's actually a pretty high-end handcuff, but I think given how productive he's been when he's on the court, he should continue to earn minutes. And if Claxton were to miss any time, he would be a high-end pickup and would be almost a guaranteed double-double. If you're in a deeper league and are looking for a big, I would definitely give him a look. If you do pick him up though, just know he won't get you any threes and he'll have very modest assist production and he will definitely hurt your free throw percentage. Those are some waivers to consider picking up for week 11. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe and let me know your thoughts heading into week 12 in the comments below.